guys, welcome back to Rust It Up. This here is a 1967 F100. Uh, it has been sitting for a while. Uh, the overall project is to get it running back into shape, possibly a full restoration. Not 100% sure just yet. I figured let's do a little overview of the outside inside and what it comes with and let's see what we can do to get it fired up today. I figured what we'd do is we'd start by taking a walk around the outside of the vehicle. And then we can check out the underside, and we'll check out the interior, and then we'll open the hood and we'll see what we got going on under there. It is a 67, and I would have to say for 67, it is in fairly good shape. We have some minor paint things going on around here, but nothing is actually rust or through. The back of the cab corner here has got a little bit of a ding that we might have to put some Bondo on, but that's not, not too hard to fix either. We are missing. A marker light here. Um, looks like the tail lights both are in place and actually in one piece, not cracked. Tailgate's in really good shape. I do like this rear bumper. I'm not sure that this is factory though. I believe this is an aftermarket. Uh, it's got a tag right here actually. On this side, the marker light is in place, but this one is broken. Uh, this side, the box does have some surface rust. None of this seems to be soft or going through, so it should be all relatively easy to clean up and fix properly. Uh, this truck does have, I don't know if it's going to open, it's got this little storage compartment right here. Hmm. Might not open, we might have to come back to that. The passenger side of the cab is in relatively good shape minus this little cab corner down here which has got a little rust spot and there is actually through on that one so that one's going to take a little bit more work but it's also mostly just patchwork and then some bondo work got an extra pin for towing just in case you don't have one i do like these mirrors this one is upside down but i am a big fan of the uh design of them and the arrows on the back let's uh let's lift it up and see what the bottom side looks like. So we got this guy up in the air. I'm gonna check out underneath the side, show you guys what it's like, and then we'll go up top to the engine bay and we'll start seeing what's going on up there. Everything down here is extremely clean looking, um, especially for being how old it is. It does have all drum brakes, all four wheels. It does have, I believe, what they called the TTB suspension. This is like one of the first versions of an independent suspension that Ford put out. Pretty decent for its era. Pretty good ride for how old it is and what it, what kind of setup it is. Lots of room in here. We can get right up and work on the front of the motor if we have to. Perfect entry and the belt is actually looking in pretty decent shape. Let's move past that to the cross member. We do have some oil it looks like coming down, but I'm not too surprised. I'm pretty sure rear main seal is probably bad on this motor, but could be an oil pan gasket or valve cover gasket. We'll, we'll get to that point. So far the frame is looking extremely good. It's got a little bit of surface discoloration, but there's no actual rust or flaking of any kind that I can see. Bushings. They're pretty decent. There's uh, some wear and tear on them, but I don't think we need to replace those before we can test drive it. I think we should be good for a while there. Steering components. Well, that's got some play in it. Check this one. It's got a little bit of play, but that's not as bad as the first one. There's some grease coming down. This joint. They all have side play, but only the outer two have rotational play, it feels like. But again, 
that's something that we don't have to worry about until we can make sure that it's going to run and drive. Let's uh, check the exhaust. The exhaust looks like it's been changed at some point from the factory, but it looks like it is still in really good condition. Let's see, the drive shaft. There's a little bit of moisture on the back here. I can't tell if that is a coating or if that is actual grease. It's dry, so I'm gonna assume it's a coating of some kind. The U-joint there feels good. Port bearing feels good. That one feels pretty good. Check this back one. There's a little bit of play in that one, and it looks like possibly the seal might be leaking on the rear differential. So we'll get to that later down the road. Um, again, the frame still looks like it's in pretty good shape all the way down. Leaf springs are still in pretty good shape. Looks like these shocks may have been replaced at one point. Those are still in really good shape as well. Again, that drum brakes on all four wheels. Uh, tips of the exhausts are still holding up good. Got a nice strong hitch that's mounted to a solid frame. And again, that rear bumper, I really like that bumper. And that looks pretty solid on the bottom side. Alright, let's check out what's going on here in the engine bay. Everything is minimal, and I love it. This was a perfect year for mechanics because there's no electronics. Everything looks in relatively good shape. Um, we're not 100% sure what motor was in here, so let's see if we can possibly find a casting number real quick. That could possibly be it. Let me grab something to brush that off with. Three, five, two. I did a little research before we did this. It looks like the V8 that was the primary option in this vehicle was the 352. The other motors were actually inline six motors in this year. So we were pretty sure, but we wanted to confirm. So that block number right there tells us that it is a 352 V8. I would have to say everything is in rather good shape. I don't see leaks coming from like the valve covers or anything. However, it has been sitting for quite some time so it might just be because no oil has been up top yet. Let's check fluids. Start with coolant. There is coolant in here. It is exceptionally clear from sitting for so long. Okay, so that was extremely clear but there is still coolant in here which is a bonus. It means it didn't all leak up somewhere. I don't really want to stick my hands in the dead spider web over here, but there is nothing in the reservoir for the coolant. We'll check the brake fluid next. So upon switching positions with Ryan here, we noticed that the reservoir for the washer is actually a coolant reservoir. It says full one hot and full one cold. So either A, this was changed, or this entire setup might be an aftermarket. We'll have to confirm that later. But, I am curious how nasty this brake fluid might be. Ooh. Well, there's fluid. It's not pretty. But there is fluid. Put this cover back on for now. That is probably not something you guys are used to seeing either on most of the new cars it's a twist cap similar to the radiator cap there but on these ones it's actually just this giant basically spring clip that holds your cap down. Let's see. There is some gunk built up on the motor. Belt is like I said not too terrible. It could probably be replaced but I think it should function for now. Check the oil. Let's 
see if there's any oil in it. There is still oil in it. And it actually is relatively decent. It doesn't really smell like gas or anything or coolant. So that's a bonus for us. Well, for me. Let's do a test on the battery. Um, the battery does not look like it is new, but it does not look like it is factory either. So let's do a test on the battery and see what kind of voltage we get out of it. So we are at 12.25 to 4 now. So what we're going to do next is we're going to pop the distributor cap off and we're going to check the contacts on that and the rotor underneath it to see what that looks like. And then we're going to pop a spark plug out. We're going to check one for sure. We might check all eight depending upon how that first one looks. So let's uh, pop this guy off here. There we go. Wow, I would actually have to say definitely been replaced but it is in pretty good shape all things considered there's no corrosion or buildup on the edge of the rotor there's a little bit of white contact mark possibly from arcing but I won't a hundred percent know until we get it started and running so that doesn't actually look that bad all right so we're gonna take a plug out Start with this front one here. Well, it is pretty black, but it doesn't look any like there's any damage or anything like that, which is a bonus. I think maybe we will check one or two more just to play it safe. So far, I am thoroughly impressed with how clean it is for how old it is. So let's, uh, let's take a quick check out of the uh, inside and then we're gonna lift it and do some other stuff on the bottom of it. Pretty crusty. So the inside of this thing is in pretty darn good shape. Um, still looks like it's got covering on the dash. The steering wheel looks like it's original. Might have a few possible repairs. There's a little tab right here. That might be the factory. Um, that door has a very interesting aftermarket speaker, and this one has no aftermarket speaker. It looks like our gas pedal might just need a new pin, but the pedal does work and so does the linkage. It does have a four-speed manual, and it's only got 75, almost 76,000 on the odometer. That, I believe, is original and actual factory mileage on this. Everything up here, we got lights, obviously the ignition. We got the wipers. You have a choke and you have a lighter. That is obviously an aftermarket radio. This was not even close to, you know, era correct. And we got our fans, temp, and pull for, I believe it's the defrost, if I'm not mistaken there. Looks relatively nice in here. Um, it does come with the original Ford 67 owner's manual. And it is in actually really good shape. And then we do have right here, looks like volume one, two, and three of the 67 Ford shop manual, which this may come in handy. Um, we all have a pretty good idea of what we're gonna be doing, but you never know, there are some specs and some certain things that these books are awesome for. So we'll have to check that out when we get further in. Let's uh, toss this thing up on the lift and uh, we're gonna actually drain the fuel. And the fun thing about this one is the fuel tank is actually located here behind the seat. So there's no fuel tank mounted underneath. 
and we'll actually show you where it drains through. We're gonna pull the hose and hopefully we can drain all the fuel if there is any, and we can make sure that we're not gonna put basically varnished fuel into the motor that we're trying to make function. So let's hop out, lift her up, see what's going on. All right, so as I said before, we're gonna drain the fuel because obviously we don't want bad fuel in it, and the tank is above us currently. This line here is the feed down, and it comes across on the inside of the frame rail here, and then it goes up to the motor. So we're gonna pop this off. We have our makeshift uh, gas grabber here, and we're going to see what kind of nastiness pops out of here. Well, I think we're off to a good start because I don't think the hose clamp is actually backing off. It is not. All right, well, try this one. Incorrect size socket. Be right back. And we're back with the right socket. Hey, this one's moving. Don't mind that. Looks like his dad. Well, I'm seeing moisture. That means there's probably something in here. Super close. That smells like paint varnish pretty badly. Well, we're gonna let that drain and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna change the oil. But unfortunately, I need this stand for the oil. Back in about 10 seconds or 10 minutes, depending on how much gas is in it. So while that is draining, we're gonna get to this drain plug for the oil and we're gonna drain that oil so that we can change that. And then we're going to try to hand spin the motor and as long as it spins by hand, we're gonna try firing it. So we're getting a little bit closer. Well, I was expecting that fluid to look a lot worse for how old it is and how long it sat, but it looks pretty decent. I don't see any shimmer or any metal sheens in there or anything like that. I think we're good. All right, so all the oil is gone from the oil pan. As you can probably hear in the background, the fuel is still draining. We're gonna have to dump that bucket and change that. I'm gonna rip off this uh, oil filter here, and then what we're actually gonna try to do is we're gonna try to rotate the engine. Perfect. Not frozen up. All right. Well, I would say let's toss a new filter, some oil in it. We'll let the rest of that fuel drain, add some fuel, and I think we're about ready to tune that key and see what happens. Catch back up with you guys in just a moment. All right, now we have the fuel and the oil both drain. Oil filters off. I'm gonna toss this new one on. Always make sure to make sure the surface where the gasket sits is clean and wiped off. And add a little bit of oil here. It helps it seal correctly. So we're gonna put this guy on. We're gonna run back. We're gonna disconnect. Or we're gonna reconnect the fuel line there and put that hose clamp on. We will lower it add some oil, add some fresh gas, and we should be ready to turn key and see what happens. So let's tighten that fuel line next. All right, we'll see you on the top side. So we're gonna add the oil. Currently, we're just gonna put this 1540 in. It matches the spec that we found online and we just happen to have it laying around, so we're gonna change it probably in like 200 miles or so. It does say five quarts, so we'll add this whole thing, and we'll get one more going. You fill it till it's done, right? Yeah, till it comes out the top. Fill it till it comes out the top. 
All right, now that we got oil in there, we're gonna add some gas. Hopefully this gas will be much better than the gas that came out. We went premium top shelf gas this time, just because this deserves it. Smells better. Oh no, it's coming out into the seat. I would laugh, but I don't think Paul would laugh. Should we tell him? Yeah, but make sure you've got enough you got space on film. Here we go. Wow! It's coming out of the seat! Go ahead. Paul! Dude! That's a safety! That's not supposed to come off at all! He's a magnet. Okay, well, we may have to do a little more <laughs> stuff here, but... Well, yeah, because we're going to fish that out, because, you know... He's a magnet. It's plastic. Where's my light? Where's my plastic? Somebody go find the plastic magnet. Just use a bigger magnet. Hmm. Well, I mean, we might as well pour the rest of this gas in. Because... Go ahead. I expect this to work. Nope. But that's on now. Kind of, go ahead. Okay. Watch your fingies. Three, two, one. I'm doing the gas part too. Oh, okay. I don't know if you knew that. Okay. Well, it does fire and run. That was a heck of a back pop though. Fresh gas in here. In a moment, it should prime it. It should, uh... That's kind of what I was thinking, too. But I'm not sure if we're getting fuel or if it's just running off the starter fluid right now. Yeah. Because I am spritzing starter fluid as it's running. That's what I mean. It should prime from enough idling. All right. That. Try it again? If we, if we try a couple more times and it still won't run, then we're going to check the carb. All right. All right, ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Sounds really good. It actually does sound pretty good for how much it's at. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking, Ryan? Let's do one or two more times. We'll give up. All right, go ahead. Three, two, one. <laughs> hey, uh. Can I crank it, suck the fire in? No. Blow really hard, Ryan. Uh, hey, you want me to pour water on it? Not in there, but on that one, yeah. Oh, truck. Oh, geez. Uh, is there more water? <laughs> Don't help the spill, I guess? Yep, that's all he's doing. Did you get it out? Let's get him the towel. Got it. I think that's a good stopping point for the day. Let's do it again. Because the last time something like this happened, we gave up. Let's go home. Goodbye. Hey, Paul. Why is there gas coming out under the seat? Why are you allowing their gas to come out underneath the seat? We're going to put all five gallons in just to see what happens. Why? We're going to see how much gas comes out of the seat. Then we'll know where the hole is. Did that just like break? I think I may have just broke the safety lock without even trying. We did it. We made a non-safe safety can. Yay! The sound that comes with it. I still got a soldier with the Jolly Rancher story. Jolly Rancher. If only we had smell o vision. This is some dramatic lighting if you want your Tinder photo. <laughs> Add it to the calendar.